Hey everyone, my name is Steve, and welcome to Gamer Stranded. This is a show where I take two video games from any console, from any generation, face them off with one another, and decide which one I can't live without, and which one gets tossed out to sea. This episode is all about this beast right here, the PlayStation Analog Joystick, better known as the PS1 Flight Stick. Released in 1996 to some mixed reception, mainly because of the high price and just the sheer mass of this thing. But to be honest with you, I am personally quite the fan, and I really couldn't go back to any flight sim without it. And the first game up, strap in, grab your favorite wingman, and try not to get fried. It's Wing Commander 4, The Price of Freedom. The war against the Karathi is over. However, tensions between the Confederation and the border worlds are heating up. Once again, you take control of Colonel Christopher Blair, who's pulled out of retirement, trading in the tractor for Hellcat 5. There's a reason this series is an all-time classic. Conspiracy, intrigue, and espionage all wrapped up into a flight sim package. Okay, so here we go with Wing Commander 4. Now, I must admit that I'm a very big fan of this franchise, especially 3 and 4. Oh man. Oh, I just crashed into it. And, you know, they would be very, oh, very high on my list to get the Final Fantasy VII treatment. You know, it's like remaster the cinemas, oh, redo the gameplay, and, oh, that would be great. Just the budget and the production that they put in this game is just crazy. I mean, all real sets for the most part. Hey pal, spare the price of a drink for an old vet? Help him out. This is one of my favorite things about the Wing Commander series are, you know, these decisions that you can make throughout the games that, um, you know, they actually shape the story. And they have consequences, which is really nice. Confederation Space Force Reserves. It's my duty to inform you, you are being recalled to active military service. Okay, so here's our first look with, <laughs> with this beast of a controller. And, you know, it actually still feels pretty good. It's like the button mapping is pretty good for the most part. There's one button on the kind of back of the joystick that's in an awkward place. So there's more than one configuration you can do with the flight stick, but um, my preference was having the left joystick be the throttle. It just feels natural, especially playing a lot of PC games with the Hodas controller. And, you know, for being an older game, it's like, yeah, it's like the graphics are pretty crude, but I don't know, there's something about flight sims where you really get sucked into it and I mean, you don't really notice it all that much when you're playing. I'm more worried about staying out of the line of fire and getting kills. And the rest is kind of just your imagination kind of takes over. Look what the solo winds blew in. Welcome aboard, Colonel. Vagabond was one of my favorite characters from Wing Commander 3, so... Happy that he makes his return in four here. <laughs> Better luck next time. And these kind of interactive settings, I mean, it's what makes Wing Commander so great, I think. Well, one of the many things that makes Wing Commander so Can I great. You somewhere, Lieutenant? Just shipped in, sir. You'll also Just see a lot of familiar faces throughout the course of this game. I mean, even in the background, you might notice some people you recognize from other movies or TV shows. I just wish there was still some Karathi around. <laughs> I think you're a little late on that score. Here's a screen you don't see too often these days. Actions speak louder than words, Colonel. I'm not sending you there merely as a symbol. I'm putting you back in the cockpit, where you'll be reunited with an old friend. The thrill of battle. Next up, a massive M. So 
if someone were to ask me what's the first thing I remember of the PlayStation, I would have to say it's the PlayStation Tilt. Now, mind you, this is back before the internet was actually a thing. This is back when AOL CDs were spilling out of people's mailboxes and into the streets. So I didn't really have a way to research the problem that was going on with it. But I remember the game that this first happened with. It was Star Wars Rebel Assault 2. And I just remember the cutscenes were just skipping like crazy. So I actually brought it back to the store, brought home a new one, and nope, still skipping. So, um, I don't know what led me to do this. Like, I wasn't very technical back then, and, uh, I just kind of figured it might be the motor, so I kind of started to tilt the PlayStation up and up and up until eventually, like, it just kind of went away and the cinemas were playing fine. Um, so I kind of just grabbed a bunch of CDs and stacked them under there <laughs> until eventually the stack of CDs grew and grew and grew and then the inevitable kind of happened and sadly it died. Next up, a massive empire is out for complete galactic control and as a member of the resistance you can help stop it. I know what you're thinking, but this isn't Star Wars. This is Colony Wars. In the distant future, natural resources are depleted. Earth itself has become a full-blown empire and they are becoming very aggressive in obtaining these resources from different planets. However, the colonies on these planets get kind of ticked off that Earth is stealing everything from them, so they decide to form up and start a resistance. This is where you come in. You'll play as a pilot who fights for the League of Free Will, which, by the way, is a much better name than the Resistance. And much like Wing Commander 4, you'll pilot several starfighters throughout the course of the campaign. Fire up the thrusters, because here we go. Okay, so here we go with Colony Wars. The Navy was stretched across the star systems, governing and oppressing, then transporting its spoils back to Earth. The League was small and tightly knit, able to hit the Navy hard and quick before disappearing into darkness. But the story of Colony Wars is actually really good, but there's just not enough cutscenes for my liking. They're very spread out. Now, unlike Wing Commander 4, where you're, you can kind of uh, explore the ship a little bit, um, you're going to be spending pretty much all your time in the cockpit during Colony Wars, which isn't a bad thing. Can't rely on my wingman like in Wing Commander. Get him with that. Now, I did use a different mapping than I did for Wing Commander 4. Um, I found it easier in Colony Wars if I don't use the left stick as a throttle. So what I did was I chose a configuration that had the thrusters set to the two uh, top buttons on the left stick. And oh, that yeah. just felt a lot <laughs> better because your movement in Colony Wars is different than Wing Commander 4. It's uh, it's more short bursts, and you're really not always just like hammering down on it non-stop all the time, because you're just going to fly right past everybody. So one of the things I really like about the flight stick is that you really never have to take your hands off the sticks. Uh, both Wing Commander 4 and Colony Wars are, are very manageable, just keeping your hands there. Although you'll see me kind of like take my hand off and hit, hit a button like right there. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier just, you know, because the buttons are right there and they're so freaking big that <laughs> it's easier to hit them sometimes. Great shot. Lights on the seven planets of Galanaya were extinguished as the invasion threat grew. We even built anti-reflectors over the phosphorus lakes of Acheron. They'd have attracted the Navy like moths to a flame. In those dangerous times, we trusted a stranger and he, in turn, trusted us. And the game I choose to be stranded with is Wing Commander 4. I had to go with my heart on this one, because I have just so many fond memories playing this game. And I spent like two and a half hours recording the game capture footage, just because I could not put it down. But make no mistake, Colony Wars is a great game, if you approach it from gameplay mechanics alone. 
In my opinion, the story just isn't told well enough through the cutscenes, and it feels like you're being pushed from one mission to the next. So, did I make the right choice? Which one of these games would you want to be stranded with? Let me know in the comments. And please, like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching.